Now, structural adjustment programs and IMF is not new, guys. It's not new, uh, but it's almost, when I read the news, I always feel like people have no idea what they are and have no idea what to anticipate. The moment you see IMF is in a country, you definitely know uh, structural adjustment programs will kick in. And so what is a structural adjustment program? So I picked, I've been studying a lot. I've been studying what happened in Bangladesh. I've been studying what happened in Ghana. I've been studying a lot of what has happened in development, developing countries when, when they're really under a supervised structural adjustment program like Kenya is right now. So what is their typical Playbook. So typically IMF has their pay playbook is 10 things. Remember the IMF loans are not, they're not grants, eh? they're loans. Eh? And so we have to pay them back and they're dollar denominated loans. So eventually countries have to pay them back. And why they put a structural adjustment in programs is to safeguard their money to ensure you can come out of the hole and actually pay back. So they need closer Supervision, unlike all the other loans, euro bond, Chinese loans, uh, the rest don't have what is called structural adjustment programs. A lot of this is from history for you to learn. It may happen, it may not happen, but a lot of it we already seen. So what happens, number one, is that they want to encourage exports. That's the mindset of some of these structural adjustment programs. They are very keen on foreign investments and exports. And so what happens? So you start to see currency devaluation and the whole idea behind why why this happens behind their mindset is really to generate more exports yeah and so there's a lot of abolition of foreign exchange controls where you used to ease the dollar the previous government in kenya has been uh, accused of easing the dollar where that used to happen a lot it needs it's no longer going to happen as much so controls are removed you start to see for them to attract investors the issues to do with wage ceilings you haven't seen yet you start to see things to do with because for you to attract investors they want to make sure the share of labor in an economy is as small as possible so these are things you should anticipate, yeah? So you'll see a lot of favorable legal conditions and incentives for multinationals. You already seen this. If you saw the Finance Act uh, 2023, you saw a lot of uh, provisions on, uh, on repatriation of profits, on investments. You actually see it now. The tone of government is really foreign direct investments if you if you follow our trade minister who i respect so, uh, rebecca you'll see she says three things she's focused on exports foreign direct investments and and so forth so this is what uh, the structural adjustments programs everything is usually by design so it's not a surprise i want you to to know that then you start to see uh, privatization also comes in garage sale of state enterprises so really bringing that foreign direct investments and you start to see some monetary and fiscal rules which we're seeing increased interest rates you start to see shrinking domestic bank credit you start to see increased taxes and so forth and then you also begin to start to see reduction in government spending you're seeing this uh starting of subsidies especially in food and energy you're starting to see that and you you begin to see a reduction of government spending in education health these things are really what encompasses structural adjustment programs. So they're not things happening haphazardly, like I start to see in our socials. It is, these are things that are encompassed in structural adjustment programs. The whole idea is more exports, more foreign investments. And what, what the critics have said a lot is that it curtails local consumption. And obviously, because most African economies anyway, they manufacture, but a lot of their raw materials are imported anyway. That is why we are feeling the pinch like crazy, because we, we have not localized our supply chains. Even if we are manufacturers, a lot of what we are consuming, whether you're in textile, I saw textile there, whether you're in food, a lot of what is coming in as raw materials is still imported. And, and so uh, this programs don't take into account the state of play or the state of play of, of uh, developing economies that, in fact, as much as they have exports, their local content is not as high. And that's why we are starting to feel the pinch. And that's why this webinar is there. It's for you to anticipate the times and then we start to see what are we going to do next? The solutions are extremely, extremely important. So reduction in government spending will happen. So if you used to really supply government, uh, it's food for thought. You, all these changes will keep happening. Just yesterday, we had a 0.5 increase in our best rate in terms of interest rates. All those 
10 variables I've spoken at the top, you see them happening a lot. So the question is, what is the impact it will have directly on you and your business? Only you can answer that, right? I have given some things I think we can start to mitigate. If you're a large-scale manufacturer, of course, many of them are doing it already. Multinationals, they're localizing their supply chains. Localize uh, your supply chains as much as possible. What that basically means, if you have an ingredient that you can find a way for it to be produced here, by all means, I know it takes a lot of effort. Those are some of the things you can package and downstream and package it as a grant proposal uh, because it will then impact many other suppliers like you. Actively, proactively seek export market opportunities like I've told you. The talk now is investments. Uh, you can verify this. You can look at all the government handles. It's all about FDI, exports and investment. Uh, there's no running away. This is a strategic priority where we are now. Now, integrate your supply chains with bigger players that are entering Kenya. Right now, if you hear announcements of this player is going to enter Kenya, this player is going to enter, especially through the special economic zones. It's a priority. You saw the special economic zone in Naivasha. It was launched. About five companies or up to nine companies have already been approved for licensing. You should know them by name and what they are going to do. Integrate them in your supply chains, diversify along the priority sectors for FDIs and multinationals. Yeah, I've talked about the key sectors. And then price as competitively to the level of previously imported products. You can add more. These are my initial thoughts or my initial strategic priorities. Uh, but there's always hope. Literally, there's always hope. Literally. I know it because I'm in business and there's always hope.